Daddy. Mm. So I just got out watching Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania, and uh, this is gonna be full spoilers ahead. And um, yeah, so let's get into it. Bro, what the? F I, okay, I saw the movie with friends, right? And most of them liked it. Me personally, I was like. <sighs> What the hell was the point of this movie? I, I I would say to introduce Kang, but that version of Kang seemingly died. So it was like, well, if we saw Thanos in the first Avengers movie and he got his ass kicked, would you really take him seriously for the next couple movies? No. All this movie taught me was that Kang can be defeated. This dude should have been an overwhelming threat that you wouldn't have even questioned if he was more powerful than Thanos. Thanos pops up, Infinity Gauntlet, Kang pops up, be like, Infinity Gauntlet who? And then he just erases it from existence. Ant-Man, beat Kang the Conqueror. I mean, I know there were some technicalities, Wasp jumped in, blah, 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 blah. I'm still saying he still beat Kang. He could put that on his resume. I'm doing all this for revenge? Oh, man, oh, that's cute. Look, who do you think you are, bruh? I mean, what, you, what do you think this is, bruh? Oh, you know, they kicked me out of the fun group, you know? <laughs> I'm kind of pissed. I'm going to get my revenge, you know what I mean? I just got to get out of this place. I'm like, Kang, Kang, baby Kang, maybe you got kicked out for a reason. Maybe they didn't kick you out because you were, like, you know, crazy. But, I mean, that was probably a reason. But they probably kicked you out because you a bitch. Bro, like they kicked you out like it was nothing. Ant Man beat your ass. They were trying to get rid of the weak links. There was a scene, right, where all the rebels in the quantum, whatever the hell, are trying to fight Kang, and Kang is shooting these blasts at them, right? And these blasts are seemingly like erasing them from existence. Like they're just disappearing. And I'm like, oh snap! I don't know how Ant Man's gonna fight this dude. Then Ant Man gets blasted, and nothing happens. I'm like, what? Hold on. This is a man who is talking about killing Avengers like it's nothing. Like it's Sunday brunch, that type of thing. But no, it, it took him this much to even take down Ant-Man? Ant-Man? Ant-Man beat this dude. The way the movie was set up, it was so damn predictable. Like, as soon as they were like going back to like their dimension and like going through the portal and stuff like that, I was like, okay, so I'm just gonna stop Ant-Man from getting back, probably Kang, because I don't know where the hell he is. And then bam, obviously that's what happened. And then Kang beat the crap out of Ant-Man. I was like, wow, man, Ant-Man might die. I actually, I mean, damn. I guess what really disappointed me is that they're saying that this dude is the next Thanos. And I did not get that vibe at all. I felt like, bro, destroy his suit, destroy the man. You know what I mean? I feel like when fans found out that Kang would be going against Ant-Man and everyone had the idea that Ant-Man was going to get his ass kicked, and that that was going to be the end of the movie. That Ant-Man might even die. But no, none of none of that really happened. He just, it was basically just another Marvel movie. Bad guy shows up. Good guy has his moment of like, well, I don't know if I can beat this guy. And then bam, beats him. And then he had MODOK, who, don't even get me started on MODOK. MODOK was just like, nah, I mean, you know, he's cool. He saved me. And, you know, you still lost, Kang, in your first outing. How am I supposed to care about who you are? And, you know, what you can do. If we know we can beat you, man, I'll be like, what the hell? <laughs> like, why, why, why would you introduce your big bad like this? Bro, like, there has to be a version of Kang that is just, like, bigger. Because they, they made it seem like he died. So, I mean, what's after this, you know? Like, the movie was so... It was funny for an Ant-Man movie. But it was just, like... None of this matters. Honestly, like, the movie, the way the movie started out, it made it seem like Ant-Man was having trouble with his daughter and stuff like that. She's trying to be a rebel or whatever, trying to be, like, you know, hash... Never mind, not even gonna do hashtag. But just trying to be herself and, like, just be a badass, basically. Just like her dad used to be. But then after that, that storyline just kind of got thrown to the wayside. And, like, it's, like, didn't really even matter. I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, Ant-Man still got it, I guess. And none of it mattered. Just why have this whole story arc about her having that whole thing with him? And it just, it just didn't, it didn't plan out, it, like play out in any way, you know? It was just whatever, you know? And the other side characters, they might as well have not even been there. I mean, other than Wasp, I guess. But not really, I mean, it's just like, they, they felt like they didn't know what to do with like some of these characters. Like, Hank had his moment, 
with the ants, you know, because that's all he talks about, apparently, is just ants. Like, that's just his character. And, you know, that was it. And it didn't even seem like the same Hank Penn from, like, the other movies. Janet did a whole 180, where they, like, they were literally about to explore the quantum realm in, like, what, right before Infinity War? And she was cool with it. Said nothing about Kang. But then now, she's just, like, has PTSD being like, no, yeah, no, don't even, don't even say quantum around me, bro. Don't, don't even get me started on Janet, bro. Let, th doesn't even make any sense. First of all, <clears throat> I hate this trope. I see it a lot in movies, and it's the stupidest thing. It's like, I know there's danger, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm trying to protect you. Stupid as hell. Don't even be doing that stuff to me, bro. If there is someone around the corner with a knife and you say, well, you not knowing about him is saving you, I'm like, no, because what if one day you're not here and I go across that corner and I get stabbed to death? Why keep secrets when you can literally just inform them of what's going on? They're in a mysterious realm. They've never even been in like this. And they're just like, they're hearing about some crazy ass lunatic who's running around saying he's trying to conquer everything. And she's like, well, you know, don't worry about it. You know, I'm like, you better tell me before I die. That's that's how it's supposed to go. We're supposed to be family. And then there was Cassie. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. Cassie was cool, but bland as hell. I'm not gonna lie. Other than the rebellious daughter, I don't know what other personality this character has. Like, and I heard this, like, thing where people saying that she was a Mary Sue and whatnot. I really didn't get that vibe. Like, clearly, it, like, if... If she was a Mary Sue, she wouldn't need Ant-Man's help to teach her how to, like, shrink and fight and stuff like that. Like, nah, it's not like she just picked it up immediately. She stumbled along the way. But other than that, the character was kind of pretty boring. I mean, not gonna lie. And, like, she was, like, the rebellious daughter slash plot device. I was like, I mean, all right. Let me talk to you about those end credit scenes. First of all, nothing really happened, bro. I mean, <laughs> okay, look, the first one was, like, Ant-Man basically going back to being a hero. Yeah, he had his character arc that was basically non-existent. And it just, yeah, he just goes back to just doing his thing, I guess. And whatever. And I think that was it for, like, the last one. And then, like, the first one was, like, like a whole arena of Kangs. Or just, like, yo, you know, the one that was a dick, yeah, he's dead. So, you know, let's do our thing, you know what I mean? Anyway, so, yeah, after that, it was basically a trailer for Loki Season 2. All right, cool. You know, the multiverse is out. You know, Kang is coming. Sylvie fuck, screwed it all up for everybody. You know, she, you know, killed the he who remains and, you know, basically screwed us all. And, you know, that's it. It's like they don't put that much time into the characters or, like, even the story. And it's, like, kind of... I never thought I'd say this, man, but it's starting to wear on me. Marvel became corporate, man. I mean, Marvel already was already corporate and stuff. Like, oh, they're run by Disney. There used to be, like, passion, man, behind, like, all of the stories that they were doing. But it's like now, there's nothing special about Marvel anymore. It's just, you know, another Marvel movie. All right, deuces. There, there was this one moment where Kang was... Okay, so his entire kingdom was basically falling apart. Ant-Man was, like, getting closer to him and stuff like that. Everything was falling apart. And I was expecting a moment where... I mean, I understand Kang's powers were limited. But I'm just saying, like, to just show off how powerful this dude is... Like, just him by himself. Screw the chair. Just him by himself. I was expecting a moment where he would just be like, you know what? We're done here. He goes out on the battlefield, recreates everything, basically, you know, time travel BS, recreates everything, brings his army back to life, and then he just wipes everybody from existence, except Scott. And he's like, you know what? I want you to tell everybody about me and tell them that I'm coming for them. And then he just sends them out the quantum realm. Damn, that would have gotten the point across, man. I mean, I'm just saying that's what I would do.